Hello and welcome back to my garage. Today I'm going to show you how to wire up a Kubota light switch to control your left turn signals, your right turn signals, your parking lights, your parking lights with your headlights, including high beams. We're going to wire up hazard lights. We're going to wire brake lights. And we're even going to make the horn work. Now the best thing about wiring a circuit like this with a bunch of relays is that you could use any kind of switches you want. You could use, I don't know, a little red switch, or maybe a white switch, possibly even a blue switch. Or maybe you just put salt in a cup of water and you use salt water as a switch. And if you don't like that option, you can always just use pumpkin puree in a can, because why not? If you're wondering about potatoes, nope. So now we're gonna take this entire circuit apart and we're gonna start with a blank canvas. Then we're gonna build it back piece by piece so that you can take that information that you've learned and go recreate it in your own car or truck. So let's get started. Before we can hop into all the nitty gritty details of the relays and stuff, I wanna make sure that you understand why we're using all the relays. So this is a basic horn circuit. You can see there's 12 volts coming in to a fuse, up to a switch, and then when you push the switch, <laughs> The power comes out, goes to the horn, and then grounds through the chassis. Now, if you have a 5 amp fuse, that means that this fuse will allow 5 amps through it, and if it, if it gets any more than 5 amps, the fuse will pop. Up here, we have a 5 amp switch. That means if you have more than 5 amps going through it, you're going to burn out the switch or maybe even cause a fire. Now, the horn, let's say, is 3 amps. If the horn is 3 amps, that means when it's actually beeping, it's drawing three amps of electricity through the circuit, through the fuse, through the switch, through the horn, and through the ground side of the circuit. So what happens if you add two horns? Now you have three amps times two, so you have six amps, and you're pulling it through a five amp switch and a five amp fuse. So something's gonna break. You might melt your switch, you might blow your fuse, something's gonna go horribly wrong. So what you have to do is you have to make sure your wiring is rated for at least six amps, and you have to make sure that your fuse size is appropriate for your six amp draw, and then you have to make sure you either upgrade your switch to be a six or above amp rating, or you use a relay. And a relay is just a bigger switch that is controlled electronically. So you could keep using your five amp switch to control your relay, and your relay will turn your horns on and off. Let's put it together and I'll show you how it works. So now we have two horns, which add up to six amps. We're still using the same five amp switch, which is going to control the six amps of horns. We have a new relay with four pins on it. And then we added an additional fuse right here. So now we have a 10 amp fuse and a five amp fuse. The 10 amp fuse is actually what's powering up the horns, the six amps. The five amp fuse is just protecting the circuit that the switch is in. And of course I have to show you that the horns work, right? Now we can't talk about relays without talking about the numbers on the bottom. Now on the bottom of a relay you have four pins in this scenario. The top one is number 87, the bottom one's 30, the right one is 85, and the left one is 86. Each one has a number right next to it, and these numbers correspond to these colors of wires right here. So you'll see the wire, like yellow for example, is pin 87 on the relay. And if you look up close to it, you'll see the numbers right there. Now right here we have the two fuses. The bottom fuse here is a 5 amp fuse, and it connects to this white wire which goes up to pin 86 on the relay. On the other side of the relay is pin 85, which is the black wire, and the black wire comes over to your switch. So this is what's called a negative trigger relay. So we're controlling the relay by the negative side of the relay. So this is the negative side, number 85, and it comes over, goes to your switch, and then the other side of your switch just goes to ground. You can just follow the wire down, goes to your ground. Now normally that would be just be your chassis ground, or if you want to go all the way back to your battery, that's fine too. Now right here, we have the 10 amp fuse, which is the second one that we added. Now I could actually get away with a smaller fuse, like a seven and a half amp fuse, because I know that these horns are actually only gonna draw six amps when they turn on. So although 10 is fine, seven and a half is fine too. You just don't want to go bigger than your wiring can handle or bigger than your relay can handle, because then you might end up burning stuff out. So you wanna go with a small fuse that is just bigger than what your amperage draw is. Typically, I just round up to the next size fuse. 
So this fuse is the blue wire and it goes up to pin 30 of the relay. And the other side of the relay is the yellow wire, which is pin 87, and that's the output. So you have the input power and then you have the output power. So when we activate the relay with the switch, all the relay is doing is jumping power from the blue pin to the yellow pin. And that yellow pin actually goes out and is the power wire for the two horns. And then of course, everything needs a power on the ground, so the opposite side of the horns are the ground wires. And those, again, just go to your ground, which is your chassis ground to your battery. So now you can see that we're controlling a larger amperage circuit with a smaller switch, and it's totally safe. You can use almost any switches you want, and they're not really doing any heavy lifting. All the hard work is done by the relays, and the switches are just telling the relays to turn on and off. So they're doing the hard work, they're doing the easy work, and you can have some nice clean switches in your dash, and these things are tucked under your hood. So now, let's upgrade the fuse box. You can now see that I have swapped out these individual fuses for a fuse block. This one's made by Leash Electronics, it's got spots for six fuses, and it has one big wire coming in, and it allows for six wires coming out. It's a pretty cool little product, it's very inexpensive, and I'm not sponsored by them, but I like it. With the fuse box in place, now I want to move the relay over here, because I'm going to have a whole stack of them over here, so maybe I'll just... Okay, I think that'll work a lot better there, but now these wires are all curved up. And I feel like it would be better if I just had like a distribution block for power and ground. And that way I can connect all the wires a little easier. Let me show you. Now the wiring right here is exactly the same as it was just a moment ago, but now I have this block right here. And this is just a distribution block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a wire from right here to over here. And that's going to take power through this wire, through the fuse, and over here. And this whole block will be fused by whatever fuse I put right here. And then I can run power off of this to a variety of other things. So, let's connect the wire up. So now we have the fuse and the wire in place, which means this whole distribution block has power, and it's protected with a 10 amp fuse. Now, I want to make one of these for ground wires as well, but I want it to live right here. So I'm going to just move these wires over a hair and plop it right in place. I now have the ground block in place, just like the power distribution block, and it has a big ground wire coming off of it. But, now that I have that in place, I have no reason to have all these little wires going everywhere, because I can now just ground the horns and ground the switch to the ground block. So let's do that. Now you can see we've cleaned up the ground side of the circuit. We have both grounds from the horns meeting together right here into one wire, which then goes to the ground block. And then the switch is sort of the same story. We kind of removed the extra ground uh, wiring here, and we grounded it right to the ground block. So this ground block could be considered your chassis on your car or your motorcycle or whatever you're adding all this stuff to. We're basically just having one central location on this board to ground everything to, and one central location to grab all the power from, just to kind of make the whole diagram easier. Now you can use these on your car too. You may not need them though, depending on kind of what your scenario is. Now the thing that I want to actually clean up is I want to get power going to this white wire from this distribution block instead of from the fuse box because I want all of the switches that control the relays to be powered off of this distribution block and not the fuse box, because I need these fuses to actually power up the accessories. So, let's move this wire over to this distribution block, and then we'll move on to the next circuit. Now, the changes that I just made were, I shortened the blue wire, so it's a little neater on the board. I removed the fuse right here, because we're no longer using that fuse at the moment. This white wire on the relay now goes all the way over here and runs right under here over to this distribution block. And then I changed the 10 amp fuse to be a 5 amp fuse because it's just not necessary to have 10 amps on this distribution block. So let's review real quick why I'd made these changes. I want all of the switches that control the relays to be powered up from this distribution block and running off of one 5 amp fuse. And then the other five fuses that I'll have here will power up each of the relays which will then control our lights and horns. So, next, let's swap out this switch for the big multifunction switch from the Kubota tractor, and we'll show you how that works, and then we'll start adding each circuit. And, by the way, this is still wired the same way it was just a few minutes ago, with the horn still functioning exactly the same way. We're just kind of grabbing the power and the grounds from different spots on the board. So, let's add the multifunction switch, and we'll see where that takes us. So here we have the multifunction switch from a Kubota tractor. It's got a ton of wires coming out the back, but we are only using two of them at the moment for the horn. And there is a green wire, which is over here and connected right up to the ground. 
to the distribution block, and this is the same spot that it was connecting that was connecting the switch before. The other wire coming out of this switch is white with a green stripe, and that one goes over to the ground side of the relay. So let's follow the electricity really quick. There's actually two circuits going on right now. One of them is powering up the horns, and one of them is powering up the switch. So let's do the switch side first. We have power coming in through the 5 amp fuse over to the power distribution block through the blue wire, then out the distribution block through the white wire over to the relay, and then through the black wire up the white wire with the green stripe to the switch. The switch, the other side of the switch, comes out the green wire and over to the ground distribution block. So that's the power circuit for the switch. Now, powering up the horns themselves is power coming in through a 10 amp fuse, because remember we had six amps of electricity that these horns require, and the power goes in the blue wire, which is pin 30 on the relay, and out pin 87, which is the yellow wire, which is actually sending the power to the horns when we use the switch to tell the relay to turn on. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's move on to the next circuit. As if by magic, we have a second relay here, and I've actually already added the wires in the right spots, but you'll notice this relay is for the headlights, and I don't have any headlights on the board yet. That's because I wanted to show you how the relay is wired first so we can focus on that, and then we'll add the headlights second. So, let's talk about the relay. Now, if you listen really closely, you're going to hear this number two relay click. And that's because I'm turning the relay on with the switch, but it's sending power out to nothing right now. The power's coming out this yellow wire, and it's just hanging out because I haven't actually added the headlights yet. So, let's talk about how the relay is wired. Pin 85 on the relay, the black wire here, goes to the ground distribution block. Pin 30 on the relay, the blue wire, goes over to this fuse, which is a new 10 amp fuse that I just added. So again, the power comes in this 8 gauge wire, and it gets distributed out all of these, uh, these blue wires. So, that goes to pin 30. Then we have pin 87, which is the yellow wire, and that's actually sending the power out to the headlights when I turn the switch on. And then we have pin 86, which is the white wire, and that is the circuit that tells the relay to turn on from the switch. So that white wire connects to the brown with a blue stripe, if you happen to be using this style switch, and then to power up that specific switch in this, we need power going to the white with a red stripe. So that comes over and connects to the distribution block for the power. So again, this distribution block is just sending power to the switches themselves, and the switches are telling the relays to turn on, but the relays are getting power from the fuse box to actually power up the different components. So the power going to the horns and the power going to the headlights is not the same power that is actually uh, going to your switches. So now let's add the low and high beam headlights and we'll actually make it function. All right, we are now making progress. You can see we now have headlights. So these are representing your headlights. Each one is a two filament bulb. It is a 2057 bulb, which is very much the same as an 1157 bulb. But if you have sealed beam headlights, which is super common in pretty much anything from the 1930s to probably the 1990s, most of those sealed beam headlights are two filament bulbs, though there are some cases where you have four bulbs in the front of the car and you have low beams and high beams. It's very easy to interchange the two with this style wiring, so let me show you how it works. So each one has two filaments inside it, so it's essentially two bulbs in one. So if you click this, you can see now you have your high beams on. You click it back, you got your low beams, and of course you can turn it off. And here's the way it works. When you turn the switch on, we're telling the relay to turn on. And when that relay is turned on, it takes power from this fuse through pin 30, which is the blue wire, and it sends it out pin 87, which is the yellow wire. Now it comes into the high beam switch, and the high beam switch is basically just flipping between a high and low beam, so it has one input and two outputs. So one of the outputs is the white wires, which goes to one filament on each side, and the other output is the red wire, which goes to one filament on each side. And then you have the grounds, because every headlight needs a ground, which is the black wire, which you can see just comes around here and cruises right over to the ground distribution block. And you can see both ground wires are just tied together into one, 
and to the distribution block. But your headlights, they will likely ground right to the chassis itself. So again, we can turn on the low beams, we can click the headlight button and turn on the high beams, or we can turn the whole thing off. Next up on the list of circuits to make is the brake lights. So let's add some brake lights to the circuit. Now we have relay number three right here, which works very similar to all the others, where we have a new fuse coming in the blue wire, going to pin 30. Then we have pin 85, which is the black wire, which goes to ground. We have the white wire, pin 86, which comes up here and goes to the switch. We have the yellow wire, which is pin 87, which is power coming out of the relay through the yellow wire, connecting up to the two red wires here, which go to your bulbs. And that's what actually powers up the bulbs. On the opposite side of the bulb, you obviously have a ground, which is the black wire here, which again, just meets up on your ground distribution block or your chassis, if that's what you happen to have available. The other wire on your switch is the blue wire and that comes over and connects to the power distribution block, which of course powers up all your switches. So now, if you push your brake pedal down, you tell your switch to turn on, which tells your relay to turn on, which powers up your taillights. So as a recap, we have a horn, we have headlights, we have high beams, and we have brake lights. Not bad. Now let's make a new circuit. We've now added relay number four, and I've also removed a horn to give a little more visibility into what's going on with the wiring. And now we have parking lights to go with our headlights and our high beams and our brake lights. So now let's talk about how it's all wired. Now this may sound familiar, but relay number four is wired in a very similar way to three and two with pin 85, the black wire, going over here to the ground distribution block. Pin 30 is the blue wire coming over here to the fuse, which is a 10 amp fuse. Pin 86 is the white wire, and that comes over here, and it connects to the yellow wire coming out of this switch. Pin 87 is the yellow wire coming out of the relay, which comes over and it connects to the white wire right here, which then splits right here and right here, and it goes to this parking light, this parking light, this parking light, and this parking light. So that one yellow wire actually feeds four lights. Now, these lights are two filament bulbs, just like the headlights were, they're 2057s, and you'll see the red wire coming out of them as well. Now, I just connected these red wires together for now. They don't actually do anything. So you can just ignore the red wires for now, right here and right here, because those are going to be used for the turn signals, which we'll get to in just a minute. So the bulbs also have a black wire coming out the back, which you can see comes all the way around and comes up and grounds to the distribution block, just like the other grounds do. Same with on this side, comes over and it goes right here to the distribution block. And then once you have it all together, you have your parking lights. Luckily, the next step of turning these parking lights into turn signals is super easy. So let's jump into that. So you can see we have a few extra components now. We have relay number five and relay number six. We also have a turn signal flasher wired in here. And of course we wired it all up to make it work. But now that we have all that, we have left turn signals and we have right turn signals, which can be used at the same time as the parking lights and they still function properly. And that's because these are two filament bulbs. So one of the filaments in each bulb is doing the parking lights and one of the filaments is doing the turn signals. So that's the beauty of using two filament bulbs. Now let's talk about the wiring. So relay number six controls the directionals on the left side of the circuit. Relay number five controls the directionals on the right side of the circuit. So now let's go over how they work. Relay number five has pin 85, which is the black wire coming over to the ground. Relay number six, same thing. Black wire comes over to the ground. Down on the bottom, we have the blue wires on each one. That is pin 30 on each relay, and they actually connect together at this turn signal flasher. Now the turn signal flasher is actually what makes and breaks the electrical contact and makes the lights blink. The other side of the flasher gets connected over to your fuse box at your new fuse. So we finally have all the fuses in this fuse box. Pin 86 on relay number five is the white wire, and it comes out here and it connects to the white wire coming out of the multifunction switch. P85 
Pin 86 on the number 6 relay is the white wire coming out and it connects to the blue wire with a green stripe. Now the other thing that we have to do on the multifunction switch is hook up this green wire with a black stripe over to the power distribution block because we need to provide power to the actual turn signal switch, which is in this block here, so that it can send power out over through these white wires to the relays when we actually turn it on and turn it off. Now the last wires that we haven't talked about yet on these two relays are the yellow ones, and that's actually pin 87 on both relays, and it's really easy. The wire just comes out and it connects to the red wire, which is tying these two bulbs together. And the same thing goes for relay number five, the yellow wire comes out, cruises over here, and it ties right into this red wire, which is tying the two together. So let's follow the electricity for just a minute. We have power coming in through the five amp fuse, through this blue wire to our distribution block. Power then comes through this wire into the turn signal switch, this one right here. And when we turn it on, power either comes out of the white wire right here or the blue with a green stripe depending on which way you turn the turn signal. So if you turn it to the left, then we have power coming out the blue with the green stripe, and it comes over here and it tells this relay to turn on. And when this relay turns on, it takes power from this fuse through the flasher. The flasher starts pulsing the electricity, and then it sends that pulse out here into pin 30, and then out pin 87, which then pulses the lights. And the same thing happens with relay number five. We flick the switch the other way, and power goes in this side, comes out the white wire, tells the relay to turn on. The relay then takes power from this fuse through the flasher. It starts pulsing the electricity, and then it goes in the relay, through pin 30 and then out pin 87 over here through the yellow wire into the red wire and actually pulses the bulbs. Now the one thing that we haven't talked about yet is the hazard switch. We need to make all four of these blink at the same time so that if your car is broken down on the side of the road you can flick a switch and you know alert people that you're in some sort of bad scenario. So let's wire that up. As you can see, we now have a hazard switch that blinks all four lights. That's pretty cool, but it is using the turn signal circuit, which you can see because I'm flicking the turn signal lever here and nothing is changing. The hazard switch is using the same exact filaments that the turn signals use. That can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you're trying to do. So let me show you how this is wired and then I'll explain one more kind of caveat to this whole thing. So let's start off with the power coming in. We know it goes through the five amp fuse and then it comes over to the distribution block. And then we have this blue wire that cruises over here and it goes up to a single throw dual pole switch. Now a single throw switch is either on or off. There's nothing in between. Dual pole means it has two pins on this side and two pins on that side. It's almost as if there's two switches within one switch. So what we have to do is we have a power wire coming up and then we jump it from one side of the switch to the other so that both of the internal switches have power on this side. And then on the other side, we have two pins and each one has a white wire coming out of it and they tie right into the wires that go to the turn signals. So this one ties into the blue with the green stripe and then the other one ties into the white wire, which go to pin 86's on 5 and 6, on relay 5 and 6. So we're basically just telling both the turn signals to turn on by flicking this switch. Now when you buy a car brand new, the hazard switch is not wired this way. It's actually wired with a totally separate circuit from all of this stuff. And they do that so that you can turn on your hazards when you're driving down the road, or when your engine's off on the side of the road, when your engine's on fire. They want your hazard switch to work all the time. Doesn't matter if the car's on or off. This is not that way. This hazard switch will only work when this fuse box is powered up. So that may be what your car needs. It may not be what your car needs. I made this generic circuit just so that it helps the most people possible. And I know that it's not gonna suit everybody, but hopefully it kind of gives you the, the basic information that you need 
to do what you want to do to your car. If it did, or if you just like watching the video, go ahead and hit that like button. And you can subscribe to see a lot more. I've got a ton of these videos already, and I'm going to be making a ton more. So, thanks for watching, I hope to see you next time, and if you have a minute, check out this video right here. This video shows how to choose the right wire size and fuse sizes when you're building these type of circuits. So check that out, and we'll see you on the next one.